Portland, Oregon, June 2nd, 2018. 911. Um, hi, we are at um, uh, Oregon Culinary Institute. A shooting. The scene, the Oregon Culinary Institute. It was a school as well as a restaurant where the students, as part of the curriculum, prepared and served three-course lunches and four-course dinners. Detectives walked in through a storage area and then into an instructional kitchen. He was lying on his back right in front of this large kitchen sink. The victim was a chef and a teacher. We're given four dozen oysters to each team. Dan Brophy was dead at age 63. Somebody just wanted to execute this person. As investigators began looking for suspects, attention naturally turned to Dan's wife, Nancy. Except, everyone said it was obvious Nancy and Dan loved one another. Dan's passions revolved around food, Nancy's around writing, specifically mysteries and romance novels with names like Hell on the Heart, The Wrong Lover, The Wrong Husband. You get the idea. It's funny, we go to work and we bust Dan's chops about it. So you must be a firecracker in bed, buddy. He'd be like, shut up. <laughs> oh yeah, we bust his chops constantly. Then it turned out that in addition to those novels, Nancy had written something else. It was a blog post. The title, How to Murder Your Husband. And that was why three months after the murder, the case made headlines when Nancy Brophy was arrested and charged with Dan's murder. It's not that often, I think, that you get someone who's accused of murdering their husband attached to a blog post in which they write about how to murder their husband. No, it's not. <laughs> um, and it was quite a piece of information to find. We were all shocked, and then especially after reading it and kind of going, oh my gosh, she kind of followed her own plan. In fact, when Nancy Brophy's trial began, the shocks didn't stop especially when she decided to take the stand in her own defense and talk about her life without Dan. It's like you've lost an arm, you know? It, like, you're just not as good as you were when you were with him. And then a twist in the trial. Nancy said she couldn't remember a thing during the time frame of the killing. Isn't it possible with your memory problems of the morning that you actually went into the building and shot your husband and you just don't remember? No, it is not. I did not shoot my husband. You were there in the area at the same time that someone happens to be shooting your husband within a six minute window with the exact type of gun that you own. That's your version of what happened. That is not my version. I think your case is held together with real frankly, band-aids. Hmm. Um, I have so many thoughts. Josh joins us live <laughs> from L.A. Good morning to you, by the way. I know it's early there. Good morning. So, Good morning. so Nancy has been convicted. We can say that. So I guess they didn't buy what we just heard there. What kind of sentence is she facing now? She's going to be sentenced on Monday. There's a, there's a mandatory sentence in Oregon. It's 25 to life. She'll be eligible for, for parole when she is 92. Wow. wow. So she writes the blog post titled How to Murder Your Husband. Investigators clearly used that. How did she address it or try to explain it? Well, you know, the interesting thing is you would think that if you wrote something that was you know, publicly available, and uh, and that the title of it was How to Murder Your Husband, <laughs> and then your husband was subsequently murdered, you would think that that might make you a suspect and that that would come up in trial. She was actually a suspect for other reasons, because after oh. saying she'd been home, she was spotted in the, in the area where the murder was committed. And the blog post actually didn't come in, because the judge said it was written too long ago, wow. and it also doesn't exactly describe the crime, and she was a writer. So they used some of the information huh. in it to question her, but that's not what actually made her a suspect. Real police work made her the suspect, wow. and that's probably not why she was convicted. Makes it. But then you add that to it, and it just makes it. Story, <laughs> right? This is why Dateline is such a hit. I mean, because now everybody's going to watch tonight to get the full story. Josh, thank you so much for joining us. You got, you could write Thanks, a book. Guys. <laughs> My goodness. You probably already have. All right, Murder in Kitchen 1, it airs tonight at 10, 9 Central, right here on NBC. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.